Hey guys, welcome to Cakewalk Cambridge. I'm Aisha and today we're going to start with chapter 9, Transport in Animals. So we previously did transport in plants, so now we'll be covering animals. That is basically our circulatory system and um, the uh, movement of substances around the body. So let's get started. Okay, so basically substances are moved around the body via circulation. So you need to know that humans have a double circulatory system where blood flows through the heart twice to form a complete circuit. And the advantage of this is that blood is kept at a high pressure. So how is blood kept at a high pressure? So every time the heart pumps blood, the pressure is increased. So because it moves through the heart twice, the pressure is raised. Okay, so you are asked to define a double circulatory system and this is your answer. Um, flows through the heart twice to form a complete circuit. It could come for two marks as well for the first part of the answer till twice and complete circuit is your second mark. And the advantage is also asked, so it keeps blood at a high pressure. Um, now this second statement is basically what your circulatory system is and what you should be able to state it is. So it basically is a system of blood vessels with a pump and valves to ensure the one-way flow of blood. When you are asked the definition of valves, your answer only is to ensure the one-way flow of blood. Okay, that's your answer. Now, when you look at fish, which have a single circulatory system, so blood flows through the heart once to complete a, com to complete a full circuit. Um, and the problem with this is that it, is it, the blood is at a lower pressure relatively, and so it may not always be effective, the system. So basically blood flows from the deoxygenated blood, which is basically impure blood, flows from the organs to the heart, which is then pumped to the gills, which are like equivalent to the lungs of the fish, and then goes straight into the organs again. So it's just one loop. So because it's not getting that extra pump from the blood after the gills, blood is at a relatively low pressure. So this is basically it. Now in, in this chapter, blue is going to represent deoxygenated blood and red is going to represent oxygenated blood. So as you can see, blue veins, so the um, blood, deoxygenated blood flows to the, to the heart, which is this kind of shape, which you will be asked in your exam. Then it goes into the gill capillaries and then straight back, it's oxygenated and goes back into the body capillaries. You will be asked what um, follows the heart and what follows the gills. Um, as in like the organs. So the gills follow the heart and the organs follow the gills. Um, you should be able to state the order. It's a single circulatory system and blood is at a relatively low pressure. So that makes the humans, the animals, or the human circulatory system more efficient. The efficacy is higher. Okay, so this is basically your diagram. You do not need to know the apex. Okay, so this is your aorta, this um, shape with the three little things at the top, the projections. Okay, so we're going to go through it slowly. So um, this is your vena cava, okay? So this is your superior vena cava because it's from the top, and this is your inferior vena cava because it's from the bottom. So deoxygenated blood, as shown by the blue arrows, flows from the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium. Okay, the right atrium is this side. In um, the heart, it's inverted. For biology, everything's inverted. So this is your right and that, and this is your left. So your right atrium, it then flows through the bicuspid, through the tricuspid valve, I'm sorry, through the tricuspid valve because it, has, it is at a, de it is the, so because it's a deoxygenated blood, it is blood at a lower pressure. So when the pressure is low, the valves need to be more, um, thicker and more efficient in terms of preventing the backflow of blood, okay? So it's a tricuspid valve, it then flows into the right ventricle when the atria contract. Then after that, it flows through the semilunar valve, which is over here, you should be able to name these, um, into the um, pulmonary um, artery, okay? From the pulmonary, as labeled here, the pulmonary artery, it travels to the lungs, after it travels to the lungs, the blood gets oxygenated and purified, which you will learn in chapter 11 and 12, and then returns into the pulmonary vein, which is here. And as you can see, it's oxygenated, so it's red. Okay, the left pul the pulmonary vein, which then enters the left atrium, the atrium of contract, and the bicuspid valve opens to allow the blood to go into the left ventricle. 
Then after that, the ventricles contract and the semilunar valve opens and it travels to, to the aorta where it is pumped to the other parts of the body. So you should be able to state this, this in order. Very often these parts will be um, labeled and then you will have to use the labels to identify the whole process. You should also be able to identify the labels themselves to get separate marks for these. Um, this wall that divides this, the right and left ventricle, is the septum, which basically prevents the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. You should be able to label it, identify it, name it, and state its function. Um, also, um, the left ventricle has a thicker wall than the right ventricle, not because it has to pump more blood, but because the blood has to be pumped at a higher pressure. Okay, because the right ventricle only pumps the blood to the lungs, whereas the left ventricle pumps it to the, all the organs in the body. So that was basically your circulatory system. Okay, now this is basically a magnified diagram of what happens. So you have um, oxygenated blood that flows through the artery. Um, the artery then branches out into an arteriole, which then forms a capillary, which is only one cell thick. It joins branches in again, joins together to form a venule and then a vein. So the oxygenated blood slowly becomes deoxygenated because carbon dioxide and water from the muscles and um, cells is um, transferred into the capillaries, whereas the oxygen and glucose are um, transferred to the organs and cells. So this exchange happens and that is why the color of the blood changes. The color represented in the diagram for the purity of the blood in real life. Okay, so now these are the adaptations of an artery, a vein, and a capillary. So this is an artery, as you can see, it has the smallest internal space over here. Now this space, this empty space is called the lumen. So an artery has a small lumen. You will also be asked to identify and label the lumen. So just remember the empty space in the center is the lumen. So why does an artery have a small lumen? Because it has a thick outer wall and it has layers of elastic fiber and muscles. Now, what is the purpose of this? The arteries transport oxygenated blood. Now, oxygenated blood is at a higher pressure. So to withstand the higher pressure, it has to be able to be strong, okay? So the strength is improved by these layers of muscle and fiber that hold the blood without the blood vessel bursting, okay? Then we have the vein. The vein has a large lumen. Now, why? It's the opposite. It has thin layers of muscle and elastic fiber and a thin outer wall because um, it carries deoxygenated blood, which is at a way lower pressure. So it doesn't really need to be strong and thick to withstand. There's nothing to withstand, okay? Veins also have valves. Valves prevent the backflow of blood and ensure the one-way flow of blood only. Now, capillary is only one cell thick. It has a very small lumen and you can see it is made of a single layer of cells. Why? Because as we learned in chapter 3, for diffusion of substances to take place, the distance across which diffusion needs to occur has to be as minimalist as possible. So a single layer of cell means one single wall has to be penetrated and so that makes the capillary able to um, provide a suitable surface for diffusion to take place. You will need to remember these adaptations and the drawings, okay? The drawings are very important, especially for an artery and vein. I've not really seen a capillary for artery and vein for short with the labeling. Okay, um, now this basically is your blood vessel, your function, structure, the lumen and valves and how they work. So I just basically explained all of this, okay? So, um... I don't know if I, if you, if you, if you want me to re-explain it, you can probably email me and I'll like send you a video personal one or I can message you. But um, this is basically it. So arteries always carry blood away except the, uh, and yeah, so arteries carry blood away and all the blood is oxygenated except that carried by the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the um, right ventricle to the lungs, okay? And the veins carry deoxygenated blood except the pulmonary vein, which carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to the left atrium. And veins return blood, arteries carry blood. Um, yeah, so scapularies are one cell thick. Here, these are the adaptations in the drawing. A narrow lumen, um, very narrow and a wide lumen, prevents backflow of blood. 
because the others don't have valves. Um, and this basically is what I explained before. Okay, so I want you to just read this part. Okay. Okay, so this is your diagram of your artery, which branches into an arterial, capillary, venule, and vein. So oxygenated blood flows from the artery into the arteriole. Plasma from the arteriole is forced out to um, the um, cells and it forms tissue fluid. So waste substances from the cells diffuse into the tissue fluid and um, the glucose and the nutrients from the tissue fluid diffuse into the cells. The tissue fluid then returns into the capillary via diffusion. Okay, and superfluous or excess tissue fluid um, is um, drained into the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is basically your defense against infections. Um, your lymphatic system has um, lymph nodes that are present throughout your body, which contain sites of phagocytosis. That is, um, they have phagocytes and um, lymphocytes um, that um, engulf um, pathogens and waste products, waste substances. Um, so the blood is kind of pure, the um, fluid is kind of purified and the fluid is then drained back into the circulatory system for um, circulation. Okay, so basically a lymphatic system is part of your body's defense against infections. Um, it is also, um, it also has a lacteal which is present in the small intestine which absorbs fats. Um, it drains tissue fluid um, back into the circulatory system and it purifies the fluid. Okay, that's basically your lymphatic system. Okay, now what the blood contains. So your blood contains plasma, which you can see is this watery liquid. It has red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. We're going to explore each of these, okay? Okay, so this is your white blood cells. There are two types, phagocytes and lymphocytes. Phagocytes have a weird shape and a weird nucleus as well. Um, it's um, kind of disjointed and abstract, whereas the lymphocyte has a circular, round, large nucleus. So the phagocyte, you need to know the labeling and drawing as well. So a phagocyte basically um, carries out phagocytosis where it engulfs pathogens and bacteria um, in a process called phagocytosis. Um, it um, kind of destroys the pathogen, so it prevents it from multiplying as well. Lymphocytes, on the other hand, produce antibodies which mark down these um, pathogens for the phagocytes later attach themselves to and engulf in phagocytosis. Lymphocytes produce antibodies, very important to remember, okay? We will also be studying this in chapter 10, but that was that for now. Okay, so now this is basically your summary of what you need to know, and this will give you marks like this. This could come for like a six mark answer. You, you write down this table, not in point form, not in a table form. In a paragraph form with explanation, you get your marks. So as we saw, the lymphocyte, um, which is a white blood cell, is used to produce antibodies. Phagocytes carry out phagocytosis. Red blood cells transport oxygen and contain hemoglobin. So the oxygen combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. And oxygen is transported um, to the um, cells of the body via the red blood cell, which is present in the blood. And then we have platelets, which are used in clotting. Um, and we have the plasma. Plasma is used for the transport of blood cells, ions, Nutrients, hormones, and carbon dioxide. You should be able to name at least three of these substances here, and um, you should be good to go. Clotting, very, very important. You can get so many marks here. So, um, clotting is basically where, so basically in your plasma, you have plasma proteins. Um, so, proteins could be plasma proteins, antibodies, enzymes. So, an example of a plasma protein is fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is soluble. So when you have a wound or a cut in your skin, the soluble fibrinogen is converted to insoluble fibrin. Now here, when you're mentioning this point in your answer, you get one mark for stating fibrinogen to fibrin and another mark for soluble to insoluble. Why should it be insoluble? That is to form a mesh. So nothing can penetrate it. So it's insoluble fibrin. It forms a mesh. Platelets are involved. You write this, you get your third mark, your fourth mark, because one, two, three, four. Now, what is the purpose of the mesh formed by the fibrin? It prevents the entry of pathogens into the blood and prevents the loss of blood outside the system. So this is basically your um, 
process of clotting, it's honestly quite easy to remember. You just, you come to like five to six marks and you can't let it go. Also, they may give you a diagram with the components of blood and you like label it with letters. Again, you will have to identify the letters and give this whole process, okay? It's very important to write everything. Anyways, that was chapter nine. I hope this helped you. Um, please like, subscribe and share this video. If you have any um, questions, you can always email me. Don't worry, we'll get through this together.